welcome you to uh, the 2013 NCAA Division I Wrestling Championships press conference for the student athletes. Before uh, we get started, I did want to make sure that you saw Lori Cannon, if you did not know already who she was. Lori, are you here? I'm here. Yes. Uh, if you have a question, uh, she can answer it, or you can come to me. I'm Tom Crochel, the Athletics Communications Director at Iowa State, and uh, we're the, the host school. I want to welcome everybody. If you have a problem, uh, we will do our very best to uh, rectify it, and uh, please do not hesitate to ask. In terms of this press conference, what we're going to do is uh, we'll open it for questions. I will call on people. We do not have a handheld mic, so I would ask you to please speak up. It's a relatively small room, obviously, so uh, we should be able to hear everybody, but we uh, want to make sure that we do uh, hear out your question. To my left, your right, uh, respectively, I've got Kyle Dake of Cornell, Matt McDonough of Iowa, Dustin Kilgore of Kent State, Jordan Oliver of Oklahoma State, and Ed Ruth of Penn State. And uh, we will open it for questions. If you want to ask a question, raise your hand. We'll call on you. Yes. OK, uh, this is for everybody. Uh, it deals with this so-called main event format that we're using. Obviously, Kyle, you're the one, you and David are the ones who really been thrown in the spotlight here. But I'd really like to know what all of you think about saving one match, the big match, to the end. It, it, should they continue to do this in the future? Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of exciting for me, at least. Um, I don't know. Being the last match is kind of like the main event. And, you know, it's just, it's just something cool that the NCAA is doing. I mean, it wouldn't matter if I was the last match or the first match. Honestly, I could care less. I just want to go out and wrestle. Um, it's kind of along the same lines, um, although I guess I'm always used to being the first match, so I already kind of have to deal with that in the sense that um, you got to be ready right away. There's no kind of watching a few matches and getting it, getting you pumped up. You're the first one out there. Being the last one out there would be a lot kind of along the same lines. Um, you know, you, you're the last thing that everyone sees, so there's a there's a exciting factor there is that, you know, when everyone goes home, you're going to be the last thing on their mind, hopefully, if, you know, if you perform the way you're supposed to. Uh, to me, it really doesn't matter. You know, it might, I think it kind of will help the sport a little bit, and uh, maybe with the viewers, uh, get more people to stick around to watch, I know, as it comes down to the heavyweight matches. Uh, it, it tends to be that a lot of people leave the arena, and, uh, you know, maybe this will be what's something that we need to change the sport to uh, get people to stick around and really see all the matches and focus. Because, uh, you know, and with, of all the athletes here, everyone's worked just as hard as each other each other to get to the finals. And, uh, you know, it, it'd be uh, really good to show a little respect for all the athletes competing. Uh, just like Dustin said, I think it's great for the sport. Uh, obviously, uh, if it happens, the Dave Taylor match is a, a really anticipated match, and, and the audience and, and all the viewers are going to stick around and stay tuned in to uh, watch this match, but also watch all the other matches. But it's keeping the, the crowd into it and keeping everybody there. So uh, obviously, it doesn't change how uh, I have to go out and perform or any of the other wrestlers. So, uh, like I said, I think it's great keeping everybody there and everybody tuned in and uh, they're going to have a big crowd throughout the whole uh, finals preview and uh, like I said, I just got to go out and do my part. Um, I like the format because, you know, I'm one of the heavier weights now, um, <laughs> third to last, so it's nice to be first at least once, first or second, doesn't matter, as long as I'm like one of the earlier matches. Next question. Bryce. Uh, Bryce Miller from the Des Moines Register. I was going to ask Matt and Ed to maybe comment on home mat advantage or crowds, or does that play a factor? I know in Iowa City, Iowa won the dual meet, um, probably loud and, and, and more Iowa fans this one. Does that play a factor in a tournament format like this, Matt and Matt? I think it definitely uh, 
it gets you excited when you got that, I don't know, that extra fan base and you can hear them roaring in the stands. Uh, with that being said, though, it really makes no difference where you're wrestling or how many people are cheering for you. Once, once that whistle blows and uh, the battle begins, you know, you're just, you're in the moment. And I don't think, you know, for the, at least for, for the best wrestlers, it, it doesn't really necessarily affect the outcome of the match or how you're going to perform if you're worried about the things you're supposed to be worrying about, which is, you know, your offense, your wrestling. But it, it's obviously something that um, brings that extra excitement when even even when you're at a, an away arena and there's a lot of people cheering against you, you know, that, that brings your adrenaline up too. But being in a home environment where there's, you know, a lot of fans behind you, it's always exciting. Uh, same thing that he said, you know, being at, being at home, it just kind of helps my morale more. You know, you have family, friends, teachers, girlfriends, whatever, what have you, they're all watching. You know, you have a lot of people supporting you. But all in all, with, with it all said and done, it's just, it comes down to the wrestler himself. You know, if you have a hostile fan base that's against you, you know, it kind of makes you want to go harder. And, you know, even if you have your own fans around you watching you. Next question, Craig. Dustin Kilgore, um, it's been two years since you've been in this tournament. You took an Olympic red shirt last year and have come back and had a really good season. I mean, how different is it this year being a returning champion from two years ago and wrestling this year? Uh, honestly, it really doesn't feel a whole lot different. Uh, you know, I'm back with my family at Kent State, and uh, you know, I'm just doing the same things that I did last time. Uh, to be, become a national champion. You know, it feels good to be back. I like folk style a lot more than freestyle. I wish the world would change, but that's not going to happen. And uh, so, you know, it feels good. It, it wasn't uh, really much of a change at all for me coming back in. You know, I was, I was so ready to do it again. Uh, you know, I have, I have a lot of anticipation for this tournament and becoming a champion again. You know, those are my goals. And uh, I'm going to do it, anything I can to accomplish it. And, you know, I've been working so hard with my coaches and uh, my teammates in the room. And, uh, you know, I've been anxious, and it's finally here. It seems like the season went by pretty fast. Luke Mirda. Uh For Kyle, obviously you've been working towards this for a long time. And I wonder if you could share with us what your mindset is, what you're kind of thinking about as you head to a weekend with so much historically potentially at stake for you. I think the, the most important thing for me to recognize is, is that i got to first get there before I can make history. So i got to take it one match at a time, really. And um, <clears throat> if I just go out and do my job, then, then I'm going to you know, get to where I need to be. Um, I've been working real hard this season, putting in the time, you know, both physically and mentally, and, and really pushing myself to the limits and, and hopefully pushing myself over the edge to get, to get that fourth national title. Next question. Last year. Oh, yes, in the back. Yep. So, Jordan, um, you know, you bumped up two weights this year. You're having a dominant season. You know, it's kind of been noted maybe you struggled with weight a little bit in the past. Do you ever think, man, maybe I should have done this a year or two ago? Uh, <laughs> I've been thinking that all season. <laughs> uh, just living a good life at 49, not having to worry about weight uh, so much, and uh, just getting out there and having fun. Uh, worrying about more of how to get better in my wrestling and things I can do to improve and to reach my ultimate goals instead of going into practice wondering I'm about five over, six over, how much weight should I lose today or, or what do I have to eat or watching what I eat. So uh, it's helped me a lot. It's helped me focus on my wrestling and uh, it's been showing and uh, like I said, it's been helping me improve on my wrestling. So I definitely think I should have bumped up after my freshman year, but uh, the past is the past, and now uh, going into this year, I got the same goals, get the national title. So, yes. This questions for Kyle and Jordan. Uh, both you guys were over in London as training partners with the Olympic team. Uh, could you guys talk about that experience and what you brought into this season after coming back from that experience? Going over to London was awesome. Uh, you know, I, I had a really fun time. Uh, it was it was really sweet to see uh, a bunch of you know the world's best you know go at it. And, and being able to see those people compete at such a high level, you know, kind of kind of set the bar and set the standard for me. So I knew that <clears throat> in the future I was going to have to wrestle wrestle at that level. So 
why not start early and, and try to try to get there now? Uh, like Kyle said, it was a great experience getting over there and to uh, just view all the top wrestlers in the, in the whole world uh, compete in, at the highest level at the Olympic stage. And uh, we were just sitting there, and even me and Kyle, after watching Burroughs wrestle, and he went, uh, me and Kyle were ready to, to strap it up and go back to the hotel and work out. We were so antsy to get back on the mat. But I just think it's a... Uh, it was a great experience just to view it, just because I think uh, Kyle has the same goals as I do, and, and ultimately wants to win world and Olympic titles. And uh, it was just a great experience and, and uh, a good thing to get over there and work out with some of the world's best. And uh, actually, me and Kyle were smack talking a little bit over there, and had some of the guys believing we were going to meet at a catch weight and wrestle. Knowing Kyle was going 65 v 49, we were talking about meeting at 57, but never happened. Think Kyle backed out. <laughs> <laughs> One last question. Um, Matt, should you get to the semifinals and face Delgado again, what will you have to do different to get to the championship match? You just got to go out there and wrestle your match. Um, you know, the the work's the work's been done, and the techniques there and the abilities there. Um, you know, he he's a tough competitor. We've wrestled now five or so times. Um, you know, I've 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 done what I needed to do to win that match in the in the past. Um, in order to do that in the future, I have to to be in the you know, be in the positions that, that I'm strongest at and, um, you know, and just, just go out there and let the fur fly. It's, it's really just a matter of, of wrestling, a smart match where, you know, you, you're having fun, but you're scoring a lot of points. And I think, you know, scoring points is always what you got to do to win, but scoring all offensive points is, um, is going to make the difference. Kyle, Matt, Dustin, Jordan, Ed, thank you very much. Coaches are going to be up here at the top of the hour. Thank you.